We're joined in conversation with Dennis O'Brien, who needs no introduction. Dennis, good to see you again. You're one of the most successful entrepreneurs and businessmen we have in Ireland. Um, but you've said recently that the entry level to entrepreneurship isn't that high. Anyone who can count to 10 can do it? I, I'd agree with that, yeah, definitely, because um, you don't need a formal education in business to become an entrepreneur. So if you take farmers, for example, they've been trained in farming, they've been not trained in business, but they're actually business people and entrepreneurs. So, you know, I think people get hung up by this whole thing where you have to be very academic or you have to have a degree or you have to have a business degree. It's all nonsense. You didn't do a business degree yourself, but you, you did go on to do an MBA in business. Yeah. So you do have that formal education yourself. Well, I, I, I had real difficulty with mathematics. So I failed the Leaving search twice in maths. And then I ended up doing it a third time when I was in university studying history and politics. And eventually I got a D in math, pass maths. So I hold the world record. I failed the Trinity matric, the UCT matric, the Leaving search in mathematics. But... I can read numbers, I can read balance sheets, P&Ls, and I have a great head for numbers. It's just I never got into the whole Pythagoras thing. Did you always know you wanted to set up your own businesses, work for yourself, or did that come about through working with the likes of, of Tony Ryan as you did early in your career? You know, from my earliest memories being in the car with my father going to school, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. He was an entrepreneur, and I thought that was a really attractive thing where you know, there wouldn't be as many structures, it wouldn't be a nine to five, you wouldn't have bosses. Of course, it was all idealistic, it was all nonsense. But at the end of the day, I knew from the get-go I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Was that due to the force of his personality? And I know he had a, yeah. a, a strong influence on you. So when I was going to school every morning, it was about a 20 minute drive. Um, he would tell me absolutely everything about selling, his sales team, what they were doing, were they on target, were they not on target, who was not paying them, you know, agents that, you know, he had distributors around the world, who, you know, who'd let him down. So, you know, I just knew everything that was, I was, it was in the ether of the car, and then in the evening time when he'd come home and take off his suit and get into casual gear, he, I'd then sit on the bed and listen to him, what happened? Did the guy pay you? Did you fire that guy for that kind of behaviour or did you keep him on and give him a second chance? So it was all that kind of stuff that was crammed into my head as I was going to school. What lessons did you learn from Tony Ryan, whom I suppose was the most successful entrepreneur and businessman of the generation before you? A brilliant guy. Um, I learned scale and that coming from Ireland was not going to be a disadvantage. He was the first Irish business person, well, probably, sorry, second, with Michael Smurf and himself said, OK, I'm Irish, Ireland is never, it's famous for the arts, but we're not famous for business. But the, between the two of them, they went around the world and became, built huge multinational businesses out of Ireland. And they didn't see that as a disadvantage. They hired the best talent that the universities and businesses that had developed in this country and hired that talent and put them into senior positions and inculcated them with a kind of a philosophy of doing business that was go and get the business, whatever it takes, work hard, park yourself in a hotel until you get the contract signed. You mentioned the likes of Michael Smurfett, Raymond mm. Lockton. Yeah. You've been blessed with that kind of network from the start, haven't you? Have, have you had a leg up that others mightn't have had in that regard? Well, you see, if I listen to my father, who is much older than me, why would I not listen to Ray McLaughlin or Michael Smurfett? I always, well, how did you get to know them, I suppose? I, 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 somebody introduced me to them, okay? I was really lucky, you know what I mean? Not my father, okay, but other people. You know, I, I, I built an awful lot of friendships and relationships in business, and you never know when you need those relationships. I, you know, I worry about kids today that are lying on their bed and they think they're developing relationships on social media. It's all bullshit. It's talking, it's conversing, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I know you for donkey's years, so I could actually ring you up and say, I remember you when you were in, you remember when I met you in Arienta all those years ago, and you'd have a, some sort of a relationship with the person. And I think, you know, I just know thousands of people. And, and I like people and I like talking to them. I worry about the younger generation that they don't have the time to talk to people because you learn so much. The second thing is, I've always had a healthy respect for older people. So, 
you know, it, like Ray McLaughlin, Tony Ryan, you know, people like Podrick O'Higgy, the, the, probably the most preeminent civil servant this country ever had, the greatest civil servant, who's still alive. And people like him, I actually got Porrick to go on my board because I was dealing with the Department of Communications, they wouldn't give me a license. So, you know, you, 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 you need to bring people. Nowadays, people are retiring at 50 at a multinational company. So if I'm in a sector where there's a big multinational and some person, a woman, who used to have a senior position in multinational business, I'd go and hire her and put her on my board, give her 2 3% of the share options in the business and get her involved. Use her, use her Rolex, use her experience.